Greetings, creatures of Earth. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy in Los Angeles with the second installment of our Upper Back Bending series. This one builds on the foundation that we laid in part one to really start to get our upper back to extend to be a contributing part of our back bend. If you haven't done part one yet, I highly recommend trying it first, just because it's gonna make all of this make so much more sense. And for equipment, all you need is something to slide on when we're on the floor. So some sliders or cardboard if you're on carpet. Okay, let's get started. Let's start by just checking in with our spine and see how it's feeling today. So we're going to use our usual spinal movement. Inhale, lift the chest, squeeze the back muscles and exhale, drop the chest, tuck the pelvis, extend the back muscles. Shoulders stay down, arms stay long, and we're just checking in. Now, if you have done our first spinal extension for the upper back video, then you know which muscles to use to lift your chest. Highly recommend doing that first. So see if you can feel those muscles work to really emphasize the upper back lift during the back arch. And then the lower back tuck during the round, which is getting our back to move in ways that it may not feel as natural, but that's what we wanna feel. Let's do one more inhale. And exhale. And then relax the arms down. We're gonna say a little quick hello to moving our upper back in all the different directions that it knows how to move before we get deeper into upper back extension, starting with going forward. Feet together, soft knees. We're gonna do a half roll down. I wanna keep my shoulders down away from my ears and start to think about this area here, my solar plexus, lifting up towards the ceiling. So I'm thinking less of like rounding down towards the floor as lifting up with my upper abs, as if someone like myself has stuck a finger in there and is poking up towards the ceiling. So there's a lot of work in my abs happening to make this work. My head and neck are pretty relaxed. My arms are pretty relaxed, but I'm not letting them roll up towards my ears. And I'm going to stop when my armpits are just about even with my hip bones. And every time I exhale, I'm thinking about my solar plexus lifting up a little higher to create even more rounding in my spine. Then I like to do some little side to side swings, pretending that my upper body is the trunk of an elephant looking for a tasty snack. My hips are staying pretty still, not a lot of movement in the hips, really trying to get this movement happening in my thoracic spine. And in this position with my abs super engaged like this, the hope is that my upper back muscles are able to succumb to gravity and I'm just creating some space in there to start my workout with a nice spacious feeling in my upper back. Let's do one more each side and then come back to center. And now I'm gonna reach my right hand down to the floor, then my left hand. So I'm twisting back and forth, like my body is a very slow motion egg beater. And again, I'm trying not to let my hips do this. I'm really trying to get it to come from that upper back and the muscles around my spine still lifting to the ceiling from the solar plexus using those upper abs to create this forward rounding position. This is a great stretch for everyone with mid back tightness and pain, really helps to open that up. Let's do one more each side. And then back to center one more time, lift, 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 create as much space there as possible. And then we're gonna press the hands into the thighs, bending the knees just a little bit more, still keeping the shoulders down. I'm gonna push my hands in my thighs to get just a little bit more rounding in the spine. Tucking the pelvis under. Now I'm really getting my whole spine to bend forward, but the emphasis is still on the upper back. Holding for three, two, one. 
arms relaxed, and then use that upper ab engagement to lift yourself back up. <sighs> so nice. Hopefully your upper back feels just a little bit more uh, gooey after that. Now let's get into some twisting. So for this one, let's interlace the hands behind the head, thumbs resting right at the base of your skull, soft knees here, pelvis locked in place. And I'm just going to twist with my upper back right and left. And I'm only going as far as I can go, keeping my hips still. And yes, my lower back is participating in this somewhat, but I'm really trying to emphasize the feeling in my upper back. And my elbows are wide, but I'm trying to not lead with my elbow. So that would look like this, where I pull my elbow back and kind of scrunch my scapula in towards my spine to make this happen. I'm just having my hands up in order to stabilize my head and neck, but the shoulder blades and the neck are not doing the movement here. I'm trying to get the movement to happen from the muscles around my spine, close to my spine and my upper back. See if you can feel those muscles. So when I'm turning left, I can kind of feel the muscles on the left side of my spine. And when I'm turning right, I can feel the muscles on the right side of my spine. One direction might feel easier than the other. That's normal. And let's go to the right this time. And we're gonna stop by that right side. We're gonna do some little pulses. Hello muscles on the right side of my spine. Think about inhaling into the right lung. That's gonna help you go a little bit deeper for three, two, one. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go to the left and little pulses to the left. Feeling those muscles on the left side of my spine. Big inhale into the left side of my lungs, which always unlocks another little bit of range for three, two, one, and back to center. Keep your hands where they are. We're gonna add some tilts. So I'm going to inflate the right side of my rib cage like a helium balloon and lift it up towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna inflate my left side. And this kind of side bending is also a range and a use that our upper back has that we want to be available to us. We're just waking up all the different ranges other than back bending first, because back bending is the most challenging one. And if we wake up these other ranges, it's gonna make the back bending feel more accessible because it's all the same muscles. It's just getting the muscles to choreograph themselves differently, right? To, to find different combinations of use to create different movements. Also, if we do the forward and the twist and the side bend before doing the back bend, we've just created a lot more heat in that part of the body and a lot more space. And all of those are really useful for getting a better back bend. Let's go to the right one more time. Hang out here, just breathe into that left rib, left lung, lift it up higher, 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 higher. And then same thing in the other direction. I think I did an e uneven number, but I hope you'll forgive me. Breathe into the right side, lift that right rib cage, right lung, and back up to center. Unclasp your hands, let them drop down, shake them out. See how your upper back feels? And join me on the floor with your sliders and your mat. Let's use those wonderful scapular muscles and upper back muscles to start to get our upper back to bend. So to start this, let's come to hands and knees. And for this particular series, I like to have my hands a little bit closer to my knees than they normally would be in a, a quadruped position for other things. And we're going to go back to those wonderful scapular shrugs that we've been working on. So dropping the shoulder blades down and then pushing the floor away. And as we do this, think about extra pressing your pinky fingers down into the floor and trying to slide the heels of your hands towards your knees. And that's going to help you engage these muscles through the armpit around the rib cage. It's your serratus anterior in case anyone cares that really are going to be incredibly helpful to finding our upper back extension and keeping our shoulder blades where we want them. 
So as you notice, every time I push up, I'm trying to go to my maximum. I'm trying to get my arms to shake. That's how far I'm pushing away. If you are someone with a lot of upper body strength, you can do this in a plank position, and that's fantastic. But I'm keeping it a little bit lighter today because I'm trying to work on getting the maximum range rather than going heavy. Let's go ahead and do one more, and we're gonna stop with the floor pushed away from us. From this position, we're gonna try to do our chest lifts just like we did against the wall. So I'm trying to use the muscles underneath my scapula to bring my sternum up and forward. And yes, that's gonna lift my head, but it's only because my head is attached to my spine. I'm not trying to lift with the back of my neck and then drop it back down. Let's try it again. Now, if you are used to bending your upper back by squeezing your shoulder blades together, this might feel really weird and super different and kind of counterintuitive, and that's okay. So if this doesn't feel like a very accessible normal movement at first, don't worry about it, just give it some time, keep working on it, and it will get easier for you. But mastering this feeling of getting upper back extension with the scapula pulled apart is going to be incredibly important if you are interested in doing chest stands, or elbow stands or contortion handstands, anything that involves putting weight on your hands or your chest while in a back bend. Because if we try to go into a back bend with our shoulder blades together, which would look like this, we are not gonna be able to access our full flexibility or strength, and we run the risk of creating some injuries in our upper back and shoulders. So let's just not. So as you're doing this, hopefully you're starting to feel those upper back and armpit muscles and the way they work to bring your sternum forward. So you can imagine that if you had a flashlight right here on your sternum, that you were trying to shine that flashlight up the wall in front of you towards the ceiling every time you lift up. Let's stop with that sternum flashlight shining up the wall. See if you can get your muscles to shake just by doing this position. So I'm trying to not lift my chin, right? I'm lifting my chest, my chest, my chest to the ceiling, pushing the floor away from me, pulling my ribs up away from the floor. I am gonna try to keep this feeling, this upper back engagement as I sit my hips down onto my heels. Now my hands might need to slide closer to my knees. That kind of depends on your body proportions. And in this position, I've taken my lower back out of the equation a little bit more. And so now my upper back is having to work even harder to lift my chest towards the ceiling. Let's try to keep that and slide forward again, back to hands and knees. Now my lower back is a little bit more arched here. And again, sit your butt down, tucking your pelvis under, press your hands down into the floor to lift that chest up to the ceiling. And bring it forward. Last one. Keep those muscles underneath your shoulder blades squeezed, press your pinkies into the floor, use that outside line of the arms to lift the chest one more time. Check in with your head and neck, make sure it's pretty relaxed. All the work is happening in the upper back. Hold here for five. Four, three, two, one. Oh, that's such a spicy workout. Who needs big weights to lift, right? You can get such an amazing workout just by doing end range of motion stuff. Love it. All right, we're now gonna use this in finding our cobra. And our cobra that we're gonna work on today is really emphasizing the work of the upper back. So if you've done any of our spinal mobility series or our shoulder series, We've done similar stuff to this, but the cueing today and the emphasis is on the strengthening and bending of the upper back, not so much the lower back and shoulders. So go ahead and grab your sliders. I've just folded my mat underneath so I can slide a little bit more easily. And I'm going to put one hand on each slider and slide them way out long in front of me. And my nose is facing the floor. I'm trying to get my hair out of my face, which is a losing battle. So let's start with some scapular shrugs. We were doing scapular shrugs earlier against the wall. This is just a different version, no longer weight bearing. So I really have a chance to go with a little bit more range of motion here, feeling those scapula move up and down my back. And every time my scapula move up, there's a tendency to maybe want to internally rotate. I'm trying to keep my arms externally rotated. So when my fingertips are reaching away from me, I'm trying to imagine I can get 
my whole armpit on the floor here, which is a bit of a, a shoulder extension thing as well. But you can feel how that engages the muscles of your upper back to press your armpits down like that. So this is our starting position. And then we're going to bring the scapula down, but we're still trying to think about the scapula turning towards the floor, armpits facing the floor. And then I'm gonna use those upper back muscles to bring my chest forward. So I'm not really lifting up much higher yet. I still have most of my body on the floor. Just my chest is starting to reach forward towards my hands. I'm actually feeling my chest slide forward on the floor. And that's engaging those upper back muscles. That flashlight attached to my sternum is trying to shine up the wall in front of me. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna slide the chest back, drop my armpits back down to the floor to my starting position. And stage one, I bring my scapula down. Stage two, I slide my sternum forward. I slide my ribs forward, reaching my ribs towards my hands, lifting my sternum up towards my chin. So I'm trying to get only my upper back to bend. I can even tuck my pelvis under and lift my belly button up away from the floor here to put more of the bend into my upper back. From here, we can start to come up just a little bit higher, but I'm keeping my bottom rib on the floor and that's gonna really emphasize that upper back bend. I'm trying to get my upper back to be like a candy cane with the rest of my body pretty straight and only the upper back bending. Let's go ahead and slide back down and repeat. So by breaking this into segments, we're hoping to feel each section of the upper back bending separately, right? So armpits to the floor, shoulder blades down, and that's immediately gonna lift my armpits up off the floor. I'm not gonna try to get my armpits to the floor in this position, that'd be bad for my shoulders. Chest forward towards the hands, slide those ribs forward along the floor, elbows are still straight. And then use those upper back muscles, come up as high as you can, keeping those bottom ribs on the floor, keeping the scapula pulled apart. We're not smooshing the shoulder blades together, not letting the Shoulders lift up towards our ears. Now we're gonna hold in this top position and just do some little rows. So I'm gonna slide my hands in and back out. And this is really making my upper back muscles have to work to hold me in position. Now, notice I am able to talk and do this at the same time. If you are holding your breath to hold yourself up, if you can't talk or sing, have a conversation with your cat, then you are using your lungs to do this and that's not what we want. Just come down a little bit until you can feel your lungs working. Don't wanna be holding your breath here. Even though I'm bringing my elbows back, I am not trying to smoosh my shoulder blades together. I'm squeezing my armpit muscles, not the muscles between my shoulder blades. Let's do one more. Keep those elbows in. Try to lift the chest one more time, just a little bit higher. higher. Imagine you're trying to smoosh something in your armpit. Slide it back out and slowly come down. Ah, hopefully you felt a lot of great engagement through the upper back when doing that. Go ahead when you come down and just kind of move things around, slide it around, move the shoulder blades around, shake it out a little bit. We are gonna now come up uh, into our full cobra, but we're not trying to go super deep. This is not like a head going way back kind of cobra because what often happens with cobra when we push up is that we can get some upper back engagement when we're close to the floor, but once we really start to use our arms to push up, this is what happens. You can see that my chest has dropped, my shoulders have kind of come in front of and above my chest, and now I'm basically making an L shape. My lower back is bending and my upper back is not bending at all. As you can see, I've completely taken away those muscles in my upper back that make for an upper back bend. And that's because the higher you get in Cobra, the harder it is to keep those muscles engaged. So we're not gonna go super high. We're gonna work on seeing how much upper back we can keep even as we bring the lower back online with this Cobra slide. And this is a much more active Cobra than just pushing up with your hands. It's so much easier to sink into it when you're pushing. Here we go. Starting with the armpits on the floor, shoulder blades down, chest comes forward. Hello, upper back, definitely feeling it. 
Now I'm going to start to bring my ribs forward. I'm trying to slide my ribs along the floor. I almost kind of lift them up and lengthen through my abdominal muscles. How high can I get keeping my bottom rib on the floor, keeping my shoulder blades pulled away from my spine, pressing my pinky fingers down into my sliders. Now let's start to add the lower back but I'm still engaged with my upper back. I'm still trying to get my chest to be the highest point in my body. Now, when we go back down, we wanna reverse it so nothing is relaxing. My upper back is still working like crazy. So I am lowering my bottom rib to the floor, stopping in this position again, and then and only then do I let my upper back lengthen out. Armpits come to the floor. Super juicy, am I right? Should we do one more? You can if you want. You can if you don't have to if you don't want. Feel what works best for your body. Doing the ones where you just engage the upper back, great too. All right, last one. Armpits to the floor. Shoulder blades down. Chest comes forward, ribs come forward. How high can you get keeping that bottom rib on the floor? Pinky fingers pressed to the floor. Elbows straight. Sternum flashlight lifting for the ceiling. Now the upper back and the lower back working together. Trying to get my sternum to lift to the ceiling, not getting the neck involved today. Hold here for three, two, one, and nice slow slide back down. Nothing is relaxing. I'm controlling this slide down the way I control the slide up. Once my bottom rib gets to the floor, how much more can I lift my sternum? And only then do I control one vertebrae at a time, come all the way back down, reaching those armpits to the floor. <sighs> That's some deep work, folks. Who needs heavy weights to build muscle, right? Just use our own bodies and our end range. Thank you so much for watching today. After doing all of that back bending, I do recommend doing a little upper back forward bending. We can just do that sitting here with our legs out in front of us leaning forward over our legs. And this is not so much for a hamstring stretch. It's really just to try to get that upper back loose, shaking the shoulders around, do some shoulder circles. You can come back to some little twists. And this is less of a muscular kind of deep engagement and more of just checking in, seeing how everything feels after that deep engagement. And when you sit up nice and tall, notice if your upper back feels like it's more on, pulling your shoulders open, opening your chest, allowing your head to sit a little further back on your neck. So hopefully that's improving your posture. And every time you go into your back bending series, especially if you're someone who has a nice bendy lower back, think about getting that upper back more involved and it's gonna make your back bend a lot healthier and prettier. Thank you so much for watching. I have a lot of videos on backbending. Please check them out. Some of them are linked here. I'm dropping new videos all the time. So please like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit notifications if you want to know what's coming up. Any comments, just leave them below. Questions, if something doesn't feel right, I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for backbending with me and happy bendings. Mwah!